Hey, today I'll show you how to create a simple layered ice material in Megascan Studio and how we can bring it into UE4 to create a powerful procedural shader. Let's get started. We'll make a new project and we'll name it ice. We'll make sure we have a ground size of three by three meters and a working resolution of 4096 pixels. We'll head over to our browser and here we have all of our materials. Before we choose one, I want to make a note that the true power of Megascan Studio lies in its ability to seamlessly blend surface detail of vastly different materials together. It's very important to stop viewing each scan as a standalone material and instead look at the surface detail to see how it can be applied in another context. In this example, we'll be using a dry cracked wasteland scan to act as the base for our ice material. We won't be using an albedo map and will instead rely on the roughness and cavity maps to provide detail and act as masks for our material. Let's choose this subtle cracked layer as our base material. Alright, looks good. Next, we'll go to our PBR menu and switch to roughness. Since our final result will rely heavily on the roughness and cavity maps, it makes sense to work in this view. We'll head back to our browser and pick a new material for the second layer. This time we'll choose a concrete layer, as they have a lot of cracked surface detail that we can use. The difference in the roughness view is quite subtle, but when we switch over to the cavity view, it's very apparent. There's some noticeable tiling going on here, so we'll blend the material in. We'll use the intensity and frequency parameters under height noise in order to give a bit of height variation to the texture. We'll also set use underlying under height blend to 1 to allow for a flat surface, as ice is usually fairly flat. We'll adjust our radius and detail knobs to try and get a smoother blend. It's always worth playing around with the parameters until you get a result that you're happy with. One of the strongest points of Megascan Studio is the ability to non-destructively edit each layer. I'm adjusting the frequency parameter as I feel the texture is still tiling a bit apparently. You can get completely new noise seeds by clicking this button, which is useful. You can keep hitting it until you find a result that you like. Okay, I'm happy with this, so we'll move forward. We'll check back in our roughness view to see how this is looking. Looks pretty good. Next, we'll go to our browser and add another material. This time, I'm going to use this wet, muddy material as it's going to add a lot of cool, unique surface detail to break up the textures. We'll blend this in the same way as before, using height noise, intensity and frequency. We'll adjust the radius and detail knobs again to get a smoother blend. We'll also lower the threshold to ensure that this texture doesn't overpower the entire material. Now it's blended in much more subtly. We can turn the layer on and off to see what it looks like with and without it. I strongly recommend that you do this often as you'll easily see what a layer is adding to the material. We've lots of nice surface detail here. I'm going to go back and check the cavity again. I'm pretty happy with this result and I'm going to export. Obviously you can go much further yourself with this and add as many layers as you want. But for now, we're going to keep things very simple. Let's name it ICE, choose our export location, and ensure that our export resolution is 4096 pixels. We'll add a new export map. Let's name this Normal. We'll add Normal X, Normal Y inverted since we're using Unreal Engine, and Normal Z. Next, we'll add another map. We'll call this ORDC. The reason we're calling it this is because this will be a packed texture with our roughness in our red channel our displacement in our green channel, and our cavity in our blue channel. Before we export, I'm just going to go over and check our normal map. Looks like it came out great. Okay, looks like we're done. So we'll export the maps and then bring them into UE4. Okay, now we're in UE4, so we can import our textures that we made. 
By default, UE4 will assign the wrong compression settings for our RDC map. It'll think it's a normal map when in fact we should be using the masks compression. Once we assign the mask compression, we should be able to view our channels correctly. In our red channel, we can see our roughness imported great. And if we check our blue channel, we can see our cavity map. I've quickly assembled some examples using our imported textures. The only thing that's different in these shaders is the mask defining where the water is. As you can see, we're getting extremely diverse results, all from one setup. This truly shows the power of Megascans, as the masks that I changed were just roughness maps from various downloaded Megascans materials. Let's take a look at our master shader. It may seem a little daunting at first, but it's actually very simple once we break it down. All that's going on is that there's an ice material, a water material, and a mask which defines which of the two materials to show. I'll include detailed screenshots to set this up. For a broad overview of our ice material, I simply used the roughness maps that we made in studio as our base color input. I then used our cavity map that we made as our ice cracks emissive input mask. Finally, I made a glitter mask. All this is, is a high frequency roughness map I made in studio, which goes over top the ice and adds a nice layer of detail. Let me show you. It's exposed as a parameter along with most other variables in this material for ultimate control. You have to be fairly close to the surface to see this effect, but it does add a huge amount of detail to the material. While this input and material is quite basic, I hope it gives you some ideas of what you can do with the scans. There's a huge potential to use Megascan Studio to creatively blend masks from different materials to create extremely unique results. Finally, let's have a look at our mask input that's causing our water or ice materials to show. As I mentioned before, these are simply stock roughness maps from downloaded Megascans materials. Here's an example of one. If you've imported your Megascans library to UE4, you can quickly swap out these masks. You can of course also make these masks in Megascan Studio. They'll drastically change the look of the final material. The creative possibilities are endless here. On top of that, you can also change any parameters that you've set up with the material. This allows you to create drastically different new materials in seconds, using the same inputs. All right, this is starting to look great. A brand new material in literally seconds. Before we finish, let's check a simple snow material made in studio in a matter of minutes. You can see that I'm just blending various sand, rock, and concrete layers under a simple white solid and liquid layer to achieve the look I'm after. Making materials using Studio takes a lot of the tedious work out of material creation and instead allows you to have fun and focus on being creative. Finally, I've imported this material to UE4 and you can see how it can be extremely useful to be able to paint this new clumpy snow layer over my otherwise flat snow material in order to give some realistic variation and breakup in areas where it makes sense. All right, that's it. I hope you learned something today and good luck making some awesome materials. <laughs>